Santa Monica. We're just a couple hundred feet away from the Pacific Ocean. We're working to build a new building for the city of Santa Monica. Right next to us, actually attached to the new building, is the historic City Hall. It's a uh, registered historic landmark. So this is going to be their brand new um, city services building that houses all of their department staff, their city planners, all the essential services that you need as a citizen. The public will come here. I'm Kathleen Hedrick and I'm a senior sustainability engineer with Borough Huffold Engineering. I've been working on the Santa Monica City Services Building for the past five years. I've been managing the sustainability process for the building. Uh, we started building and designing this project back in 2014, so it's been a long time coming, but it's a really exciting project to see. It's going to be the first municipal living building challenge project in the United States and probably the whole world. So a living building is based off of the Living Building Challenge. It is the most stringent sustainability standard for the building construction industry. And that standard focuses on 20 imperatives that look at energy, water, healthy materials, construction waste, urban agriculture, and equity and beauty. All of these things fit into a sustainable building, a holistic approach to creating what some people would even call as a regenerative building. We're trying to generate all of our power on the project site, we're trying to get you know, all of the water needs for the project as well from the limits of the project. So it's, it's a very ambitious uh, system and it, and it really pushes the limits of sustainability. So to meet the energy goal, we had to work really hard to, uh, to reduce our energy use. We're really trying to rely on the Santa Monica climate as much as we can. So that means bringing in fresh air through natural ventilation. So opening the windows to actually allow all the air in rather than having to rely on mechanical equipment. The facade is, is working really hard to control heat gain. So you can see it's heavily fritted. It's keeping a lot of the heat out. We've overlaid a variety of strategies like natural ventilation, radiant cooling integrated with a slab, and then very efficient heat pumps that will be remote from the building that will provide our, our cooling. We're also using a lot of really cool innovations like phase change material. Phase change material, you see it every day, it's ice. But for us, we're actually using an organic material that we've lined the walls. As the building heats up, the phase change material will start to melt and it will absorb all the heat in the space and basically hold that space and act kind of as passive cooling that acts as thermal mass. So it's a great way of cooling the building without using carbon or energy. But one thing that Santa Monica struggles with is water. Uh, we've been in the drought for the past eight years in California, so most buildings, they get their potable water from you know, the city system, right? So when it does rain, we're going to be collecting rainwater from the solar panels that fall on the roof, collecting that water and treating it to potable standards. This is the first project in California to do so. It's a really groundbreaking thing. We had to do a lot of advocacy with different regulatory agencies to make that happen. But that's what engineering is all about, right? Pushing innovation forward, testing the limits, um, and saying that you can do so for a good reason, to create a new way of doing um, sustainable water design in buildings. So I'm standing in the compost room in the basement of the building. All of the waste from above, from the three levels, is all collected within these six compost bins. The compost bins were key to our water strategy. They gave us about a 50% reduction in our potable water demand, which meant that we had enough rainwater and well water on site to achieve our net zero water goals. The real driver uh, behind compost bins, although we did it for, for potable water savings, the, the real driver is to better improve the nutrient cycle and for you to actually recapture all the valuable nutrients from the waste and be able to reuse them. This was the first project in LA County to integrate composting toilets in a public facility. Uh, we worked really closely with LA County to get this permitted, proved it as a pilot, put in place a, a variety of safety measures to make sure that we did it in a, in a safe manner. Installing these in offices, especially one of this side, is basically unknown. There's one other project that's done, in, um, but this is the largest scale project in California to have these composting toilets installed. It's not, for, it's not for every building, it's not for every client, but if you really want to push the limits on sustainability, then this is, this is one way of doing it.
This project is really different because sustainability is first and foremost. It's not an afterthought. It's not something that's bolted on to the end. Every partner in this project had to care about sustainability and it's what drove a lot of the decisions. So being net zero energy wasn't the only thing. We also had to produce our own water, treat that water you know, sustainably. All of the materials, we couldn't just look at it from aesthetics energy performance and cost, we had to consider what is their effect on user occupancy health, on the health of our construction workers and manufacturing workers, and on our frontline communities. Buildings are very complex, right? We're using materials sourced from all over the country, all over the world. If we can choose healthier materials, that means that we're not creating a huge demand for unhealthy materials. If the whole construction in industry takes these you know, health seriously, we'll start seeing reductions in cancer. We'll make sure that our manufacturing workers, their health is safeguarded too, because it's, it's really about all of us and not just the building end users or just us in Santa Monica. It's, it's about everyone. It really is a complete holistic change from the way that we typically do construction to one that is people-centered and planet-centered. And this is the way that we need to move forward when we're talking about climate change or inequality, is that we need buildings to be regenerative and they need to actually help the communities that they're in. You know, buildings should be making people healthier, not making them less healthy. We're in a climate emergency right now. California has, has got ongoing drought problems and I think we all need to do more as engineers and clients to solve those problems and we have all of the tools at our disposal and we just need to deploy them on our projects. That was one of the huge ways that we saw this project making an impact. I think it's also going to be a great education tool since it's a building that's open to the public. So I think this is a model that we believe we can replicate all over the country and that we have to replicate. This is the new way forward for construction.